Rotor service. The rotor should always be checked for thickness variation and lateral runout while still attached to the hub. Because while a rotor may run true on the lathe, it could be out of spec while attached to the vehicle. First, use a micrometer to measure the rotor for thickness variation at four spots of equal distance. We can write the measurements right on the rotor with a marker. Remember, variations as little as five thousandths can result in pedal pulsation or noise. Next, check for lateral runout while the rotor is still on the vehicle by using a dial indicator attached to the steering knuckle so the tip contacts the rotor surface about one half inch from the outer edge of the rotor. As you recall, lateral runout is the side to side motion in the rotor as it turns on the hub. Generally speaking, if the rotor is four thousandths of an inch or more, the rotor needs to be resurfaced or replaced. Also, check the hub assembly, both with and without a rotor attached to it, for lateral runout. The rotor needs to be checked on a lathe as well to determine whether the problem lies in the rotor itself or on the hub assembly. A new trend in rotor service is using on car lathes. An advantage of on car lathes is that it resurfaces the rotor by compensating for stacked tolerances between the rotor and hub at the same time, virtually eliminating runout problems. The downside of on car lathes is that they are expensive and can be complicated to use. However, the advantages of accuracy in indexing the rotor and hub together do outweigh the negatives of cost over time. Before removing the rotor, leave a mark on one of the studs to the rotor, so if it's reused, it will match up to its original position. Next, inspect the rotor for scoring or uneven wear. This results if a worn out pad is left on the car too long. Rotors can be refinished if they are scored or warped. However, keep in mind, refinishing makes the rotors thinner and a rotor below its minimum thickness specifications must be replaced. With the rotor off, clean rust and dirt off the hub assembly and the studs of the hub. The act of braking a car creates a tremendous amount of heat between the pads and rotors, so rotor design, such as vane configuration, plays an important role in dissipating heat so the brakes continue working properly. Take a look at both braking examples. Notice the rotor on the left with veins that are free of dirt, mud and rust is properly dissipating heat as the pads are applied. However, mud and dirt has clogged the veins of the other rotor. This is blocking necessary airflow and causing the rotors to overheat. Premium Raybestos brand advanced technology rotors come with black fusion technology a specialized corrosion-resistant coating to help prevent corrosion and maintain proper cooling. Premium Raybestos brand advanced technology rotors come with matching OE rotor design and metallurgy to best dissipate heat and reduce noise. In some cases, advanced technology even improves upon OE vane configuration design. If we plan on reusing the existing rotor, Check the veins for mud or rust. If we cannot clean it, it's best to replace the rotor. When testing a rotor on a lathe, it's important to ensure the lathe itself is correctly calibrated. If a rotor is tested on a vehicle, the same measurement should come up on the lathe. An improperly calibrated lathe can give a good rotor false readings. Here are a few examples, each involving a good rotor with acceptable measurements, and how a lathe can produce two different results. In the first example, a rotor being checked on the lathe is receiving acceptable readings and is ready to install on the vehicle. The lathe and adapters perform their job because both are calibrated correctly. However, the lathe can quickly fall out of calibration by doing something that probably happens quite a bit in shops across the country, dropping an adapter on the floor. Small nicks that accumulate at the mounting surface can significantly alter the adapter runout. 
Now when this adapter is placed back on the lathe to help calibrate the same rotor that previously checked out good, the small nicks induce a slight amount of runout, but enough runout to produce a false reading on the rotor. Another way a lathe can produce a false reading on a good rotor is if the rotor isn't seated properly on the lathe due to dirt or some other impurity on the adapter or rotor hat section. This can be illustrated by using a piece of tin foil placed between the adapter base and the arbor, or between the adapter face and rotor hat section. After testing a rotor and receiving an acceptable reading, loosen the adapter and place a flat piece of tin foil between the rotor and adapter and test it again. A single piece of tin foil now causes a false reading on the good rotor which would tell the technician the rotor either needs to be replaced or cut. That's why it's important to clean the rotor's hub assembly and lathe adapters prior to testing it on a lathe. You can see that something as simple as dropping an adapter on the floor or a few particles of dirt can affect a rotor's measurement, so make sure the lathe is calibrated and care is given to the adapters to receive accurate readings on all rotors. Prior to installing the rotor, whether it's been resurfaced or just came out of the box, be sure to wash it with soap and water. This will remove any minute dirt particles from the rotor surface that could affect brake performance and lead to noise. Washing the rotor is especially critical if we just machined it on the lathe. Premium Raybestos brand advanced technology rotors are ready to install right out of the box. No turning or machining is necessary. Guaranteed. When we install the rotor, we must index it to the hub. This step makes sure it's seated properly to the hub assembly without any lateral runout. With the rotor washed and dried and the hub assembly free of rust and dirt, torque the rotor using conical washers to the hub. Conical washers help compensate for the rim depth. Be sure to identify one of the wheel studs with a marker to the rotor. Now let's check for runout again using a dial indicator. If the runout is not within the vehicle's manufactured specifications, remove the lug nuts and move the rotor one wheel stud to the right. Torque and check again. Repeat the sequence until the least amount of runout is attained. Most of the time, this process can correct runout as great as 7 to 10 thousandths of an inch.